James, Ray Dalio told me yesterday that this is much worse than the 2008 financial crisis. What kinds of base case assumptions are you making at this point for the recession and the recovery? Um, yeah, you know, I'm trying to think. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I agree with that. I mean, the the economic impact, the GDP uh, decline, is obviously much worse. But it's so specific, and it's built around the virus. You know, what kind of world will we have when we have immunity from it? When we have, you know, the right testing? Uh, there are so many unknowns now. Whereas back in '08, it was a fundamental collapse of the whole financial system. And had it not been, uh, you know, the system not been rescued, then who knows what what long-term damage multi-decade might have been to the economy. So, but listen, these are these were both uh, truly tragic situations. I mean, from our perspective, in running a company, there's you know a few things you got to focus on. Number one, we've got millions of clients trading trillions of dollars all over the world. Our plant has to work. We have to be able to facilitate clients doing that so they can manage their businesses. They, they have to have the ability to manage their own liquidity and funding and capital needs. And we play a critical role in that in the number one equities player in the world, one of the largest wealth managers in the world, one of the largest capital markets businesses, et cetera. So number one, the plant has to work. And thank God, you know, Eric, with 90% of our employees at home, we've had almost no issues from our plant. And that's just a remarkable testament to the tech and ops teams uh, at this place. The second thing is you do your bit. I mean, we, we voluntarily cut back on our buyback to zero. Uh, we thought it was best to preserve our capital to support our clients in need. Um, we're obviously doing everything through our communities that organizations like ours that are large and have resources should be doing. Um, third thing is to make sure that our teams are properly coordinated given the remote isolation everybody's going through. And we spend an enormous amount of time communicating with them setting up plans, what would it like to be like to bring people back to work, starting to think about what the future might look like. So it's clearly not as bad, or at least you don't think it's going to be as bad for Morgan Stanley and perhaps not as bad for the banking industry as the 2008 financial crisis was. What about the broader economy? Five million people filed for first-time unemployment benefits last week. It's 22 million, in excess of 22 million since this began. How do you fathom or, or even model the kinds of dislocation unemployment on that scale is going to produce, James? Yeah, this, I mean, what's the shock to the global economic system is something we haven't seen since the Great Depression. And as you point out, is, is far more dramatic than what occurred during the financial crisis. And, and, and in addition, we have this massive health crisis, which is working its way around the world with at times devastating consequences. You, you can't model this. I mean, what you've got to do is preserve your capital, make sure you're well positioned to deal with the risks, understand the risks you're taking on as a business, and manage your way through that in a way where the whole team, as I said, is working together. We have, you know, daily operating committee calls. We have risk committee calls constantly. The whole team is organized around how do we ensure that, A, we're doing our job for our clients, and, B, that Morgan Stanley remains stable during a period of incredible dislocation.